place today? Are we preparing our hearts for healing and deliverance and to be set free in the mighty name of Jesus? Are we ready? Are we willing? Are we yielded vessels? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Then let us worship him in the beauty of holiness. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth. I see that the Lord wants to take us to higher heights and deeper depths in him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we just like to skirt around on the outer banks. But the Lord is calling us to launch out into the deep. Thank you, Jesus. Deep calls to deep. I hear the Lord saying, launch out. Walk out. And that's where you'll find me. The bread of life. In the mighty name of Jesus. So let us worship him.
Jesus, thank you for your sweet presence in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us when we didn't deserve to live. Thank you for grace and mercy, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving our lives. Thank you for the work that you did on Calvary for each and every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving a rich like me. Thank you for giving me what I didn't deserve, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for healing my broken heart. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord God, thank you for being a father to the fatherless. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. It's the Christ that's in me. 
God if we don't use it for the glory of God. If we don't use it to pursue after Him, then it's dung. It's nothing but dung. Every gift that He has given us for the time is for Him. It's for His glory. It's so that He will dwell in this place with us. And I don't know about y'all, but I need him to dwell in this place at all times. Amen. Amen. You can have your seats if you if you can. If you don't want to, it's okay too. You can stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise God. Praise God. Saying welcome to our guests, Pastor Chris and Katrina, our newfound brother and sister in Christ, and all of their crew that they have with them today. Thank you so much for coming out and worshiping with us. We know that it was by divine appointment that God sent us, sent you our way. Amen. We got some mighty great things in the Lord to do together. Amen. Kingdom building. Pastor Chris, the Lord has blessed them with the deliverance ministry. Yes. How many of you know that deliverance is real? Yes. And needed. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's kind of hard for people to hear the gospel of the Lord when they're bound. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. But, but, but when deliverance takes forth or goes forth, then he would then eye to see and the ear to hear can hear what thus says the Lord. You can hear a lot clearer when, when, when you're not bound. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank God for the work that you all do in the ministry. And we thank God for bringing us together in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're going to take from our text today, Matthew 5 and 6. And this is from the Sermon on the Mount. The title of my message, for the record, Hunger and Thirst. And the Lord gave me this message because He's put a hunger and thirst in my heart like never before. And I mean, I thought I was hungry. And then the Lord gave me a little bit more and a little bit more and, and, and the word of God says I'll taste and see that the Lord is good so when I tasted and I saw that he was good then I just wanted more give me more amen see I, I want more in the spirit huh Lord I need you I was, I was walking through the house this morning and we had worship, worship music going and he kept walking Thank you. 
there were so many people there that had we let go of the hands of our kids, we would have never found them in the crowd. There were so many people there that as we were on that train trying to get there, people were piled up in the bathroom stalls. Some people were literally laying on the doors that opened. It was so crowded that people were on top of each other. That was a press of a crowd. So with that note on the sticky side of your brain, think about a crowd like that, maybe even bigger, because they were coming after Jesus. They weren't just coming after food. These were people who knew that they needed a Savior, and they had been hearing about this Messiah that was in town. So I can imagine that it was an even bigger crowd than the taste of Chicago. Amen? Because he was little of stature, he ran and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Now let's let's unfold this a little bit about him climbing up the sycamore tree. First of all, and all my study, sycamore trees can grow as tall as 150 feet tall. And, and some, depending on the species of it, have a sap that goes up the bark of it. Amen? And, 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 and we already know that, that Zacchaeus was a wealthy man, so he probably had on his fine clothes. He probably wasn't dressed like a vagabond or anything. He probably had really nice clothes. And then the scripture says that he was short. So he was a little bitty man. And the, the, the branches of a sycamore tree, they don't start down low. They start way up high. So, so in his press, he literally had to skinny his way up the bark or of the tree that was filled possibly with sap before he could even get to the first branch and pull himself up. Does that sound like a press to y'all? Does that sound like someone who's desperate? No, because his money didn't answer his prayers, did it? His money didn't make him happy. His money did not give him joy. His money didn't give him the peace that surpasses all understanding. So he got desperate and he had heard. He had only heard about this Jesus. He had never even experienced the presence of the Lord. He had only heard about Jesus. So in his desperation, he climbed up that old sycamore tree. Man. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchae Zacchaeus, make haste and come down from, from today I must abide at thy house. Jesus saw him. In all the crowd, he saw him. And then you got to know that, that you can't look at this as a natural scene with your natural eyes. Jesus saw the spirit of him. And Jesus saw that he was hungry and he was desperate. So, so over all the other people that were there, so you're going to be in some places with some people, some other people who say they love Jesus. You're going to be in a place where people purports to know Jesus and Jesus don't even see him because he's looking at the heart of man. Man? He's looking at how desperate you are for a mighty move of God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hungry today, church? And Zacchaeus made haste and came down for today I must abide by thy, at thy house. At thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, huh, this part, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Expect the naysayers. When the Lord decides to bless you, expect people to talk about you. And expect the crowd to go, huh? What did he do to deserve that? What did she do to deserve that? Expect it. And if you expect it, you won't be hurt when it comes. 
And he didn't care nothing about all of that. So when Jesus said, I'm going to your house, he like, let's go. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, with that part now, Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house. For so much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost. So, so in one day, he went from being lost to saved by our Savior, Jesus Christ. See, it's just that easy. When you get desperate, when you're tired of the same old, same old, and then, then the Lord brings salvation to your house. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Well, riches don't matter. Right? God doesn't even, is not even really concerned about our pity parties or any of that. He's just after our hearts. He, he, he's after our faith. Oh, Lord God, I know that I, that I, if I climb up this tree, I know you're going to see me come. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care what everybody else has to say. I don't care that I'm looking like an idiot to the world. All I need is you, God. That's all I need. Desperate. Well, well let's talk about somebody else that was desperate. And I'm not going to turn to this one. I'm just going to paraphrase, but you can put it in your notes. Luke 8 and 43 through 48. How many of you know that God is a healer? Thank you, Jesus. So he saves and he heals. Thank you, Lord. See, there was this woman, man, and this woman, the scripture says that this woman had, had been plagued by an issue of blood for 12 years. 12 years. Women, we can't take 12 days. Let's know 12 years. Amen? She had this issue of blood. And, and for anybody, women, that, that know that, that not only does the bleeding part come along with it, like you got pain, you're grouchy, you're tired, you're emotional. All of this stuff goes along with it. So, so for her to have been by this issue of blood for 12 years. How many of you know she had to be desperate? Now, not only was she tormented with it, she had seen every doctor. She had spent all of her money trying to figure out what is going on. Some of y'all have spent so much time on WebMD trying to figure out what's going on. Jesus. And when she did, she 
surrender it all to him. Lay it on the altar of Christ today. Can we do that? Thank you, Jesus. And then my final scripture. I need you to turn to me for this one because there's a little bit of reading. First Chronicles 29 and 10. This is Kevin's boy. This is David. He's a man after God's own heart. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. First Chronicles. I can get my app to work. Thank you, Lord. How many of you know we serve a good God? First Chronicles 29, 10 through 20. What do I do with my glasses? They magnify the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Bless be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after the sword? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand. And is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. Our fathers keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the hearts of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee, and give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart, to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. And David said, to all the congregation, now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord, God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads and worshipped the Lord and the King. In Jesus' name, we worship. Amen. David said it so eloquently. All this stuff that we have. Everything that I stored up, Lord, it's yours because you gave it to us. Even my tongue to worship you. Even my heart to give you praise. Lord, it already belongs unto you. So all I'm doing is offering myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, God. So, will we commit ourselves to return unto the Father what already belongs to Him? Our hearts and our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless you all. I thank you all.
for being here today. I'd like to pray a prayer over all of us. You know, my heart is that the body of Christ returns to the heart of worship. Thank you, Jesus. So if you can, stand to your feet. And let us receive what the Lord has for us today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you. We honor you, Lord God, with the fruit of our lips. We honor you, Lord God, with our worship today. We thank you, praise you, Lord God, because we know that, that you breathe the breath of life into us. So that we open up our mouths and, and we worship you and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you for reminding us that you are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, that you are the great I am, that you are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikhanu. You are the great I am. You are El Lord, we love you. Lord God, receive our worship today. Lord, Lord God, we just ask that you continue to be in our presence. Holy Spirit,